A couple of decades back, the term Space Wars would only mean a sequel to a sci-fi movie series. But today, new age global military conflicts could be dubbed as Space Wars. In April 2024, the United States and Japan introduced a resolution to the United Nations Security Council seeking to prohibit the deployment of nuclear weapons in outer space. This resolution underscored the obligations of the 115 state parties to the Outer Space Treaty, including the permanent members of the Security Council, to avoid placing any objects carrying nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction in Earth's orbit. The US has maintained a significant technological edge in space, relying on satellite infrastructure for vital military operations such as communication, navigation, and intelligence. The establishment of the U.S. Space Force in December 2019 marked a major milestone. It played a vital role in monitoring approximately 15 missile launches daily from various global hotspots, managing satellite deployments, and tracking space debris. The Space Force also oversees two newly launched robotic space planes. In 2021, Russia conducted a controversial anti-satellite missile test, resulting in the destruction of a Soviet-era satellite and generating a significant amount of hazardous space debris. The Ukraine-Russia conflict in Feb 2022 further underscored reliance on space assets for military operations. Shortly before the military assault, malware spread through part of the KASAT network, resulting in the disruption to the satellite internet modems of 50,000 European users, including Ukrainian military units. Over the past decade, China has rapidly expanded its satellite networks and launch capabilities, making it a significant player in space. In 2022, China achieved a new record for space launches, becoming the world's second most active space launch provider after the US. Both the US and Chinese missions are shrouded in secrecy when it comes to space tech. Yet both involve space planes that have the capability to conduct prolonged missions, transport and retrieve payloads and return to Earth for refueling, potentially making them potent weapons. India's burgeoning space tech sector is often hailed as the next frontier for economic growth with ambitious projections for its market size in the coming decade. While government reforms and a vibrant startup ecosystem are propelling this vision, the journey is not without its significant challenges. Understanding the key risks for private players, the government's investment in R&D and persistent policy bottlenecks is crucial for charting a sustainable course. First of all, space ventures are inherently capital-intensive with long gestation periods. Despite growing interest, attracting sufficient seed stage and long-term venture capital remains a significant hurdle. In space, a single-window, independent, nodal agency that functions as an autonomous agency in the Department of Science aims to facilitate technology access to private companies that still heavily rely on ISRO's testing facilities, launch pads and ground stations. This dependency at times leads to bottlenecks and increases operational cost due to limited availability or high charges. Despite indigenous advancements, India's space tech sector still depends on imports for certain high technology components and advanced electronic systems. This reliance impacts cost, supply chain security and the pace of innovation. Secondly, the specialized nature of space technology demands a highly skilled workforce in areas like aerospace engineering, astrophysics, and satellite technology. While India has a large talent pool, finding and retaining professionals with niche expertise can be challenging. India's private players are also facing stiff competition not only from growing number of domestic startups, but also from established global giants and well-funded international new space companies. Maintaining competitiveness in terms of cost, quality and innovation is a continuous challenge. As space assets become increasingly critical for national security and economic activities, they become the prime targets for cyber attacks. Ensuring the robust security of satellite data and communication links is a growing and complex concern. 
the indian government primarily through the department of science and isro has been the traditional backbone of space r and d a significant portion of this budget supports isro's ambitious missions including deep space exploration and human space flight programs like the gaganyaan as well as the development of advanced launch vehicles and satellite technologies while india has made commendable strides in opening up its space sector addressing the risks and policy bottlenecks through a comprehensive legal framework streamlined regulations and sustained investment in both r&d and infrastructure will be critical this will not only empower india's space tech companies to innovate and compete globally but also solidify india's position as a formidable player in the evolving global space economy India primarily has only two listed companies in the core business of geospatial mapping C Info Systems commonly known by the name of its app Map My India and Genesis International C Info Systems offers location based IoT technologies and AI based solutions these can be integrated with the satellite data to provide enhanced services for fleet management logistics optimization smart city initiatives and more In essence, C Info System acts as a crucial downstream player in the Indian space ecosystem. The entity takes the data and capabilities provided by ISRO space infrastructure, like the navig signals of ISRO, and transforms them into practical, marketable applications. Their expertise in geospatial technology makes the company a key enabler of widespread adoption and commercialization of India's growing space capabilities. A risk factor that has recently impacted investor sentiment is the decision to hive off the B2C business into a separate entity managed by the founder's son. This move raised governance concerns amongst investors and proxy advisory firms with questions about potential conflicts of interest and whether the terms of separation are fair to minority shareholders. The concern is that the new B2C entity even if funded by promoters personal funds might benefit from the parent company's resources and incubation without the public shareholders participating in the potential upside. Investors worry that this restructuring could reduce Map My India's overall growth potential as the high growth consumer segment is no longer fully consolidated. The new consumer facing entity is expected to have significant cash burn in its initial stages which even if funded personally can create an overhang or perception of risk related to the broader promoter group's financial strategy. The second company Genesis International specializes in photogrammetry, remote sensing, cartography, data conversion and state of the art terrestrial and 3D geo content. While Genesis has a healthy order book the project based nature of its revenue leads to significant lumpiness in the business delays in project execution or billing can significantly hurt revenues as the company has very concentrated client base while both c info systems and genesis have healthy operating margins their net margins and return ratios need to find some stability so investing in indian space tech companies holds immense long term potential given the government support and burgeoning private participation nevertheless this requires a high degree of patience and diligent monitoring of evolving margins and return ratios this is because sector is still nascent characterized by high r&d costs long gestation periods and significant upfront capital expenditure until these companies achieve sufficient scale consistent commercialization of their technologies and demonstrate a clear path to sustainable revenue generation and efficient capital deployment their valuations may remain volatile hope you like this video thanks for watching